These vessels carry uh, somewhere between 45 and 50 passengers maximum. So it's a, a very intimate crowd. Uh, there's state, of course, you stay uh, seven days on, on the boat itself. Uh, there's state rooms, there's dining rooms, there's a cocktail lounge, uh, there's activities on, on board, there's uh, kayaking that you'll do in the ports of call, also the skiffs that you saw uh, where we go up to the glaciers. Uh, so it, it's really the most incredible experience you can possibly have uh, in Alaska waters. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, about 44 to 50 passengers maximum. So there's three decks of uh, cabins on the uh, on the Admiralty Dream. These are kind of uh, the larger ones up on top. There's six. Uh, then the bridge is right here. And by the way, it's an open bridge. So anytime you want to go up and visit the captain uh, and see what uh, his charts, etc., the radar, uh, you're certainly welcome to do that. Uh, then uh, the sun deck is in the rear. Uh, on the, the mid deck, if you will, all these, all the way, every one of the cabins on these two decks has a walkway and a window and a door that goes out onto the, to the deckway. Uh, so these are, there's four suites on the back, and then these are uh, the double A cabins, and this is an owner's suite up at the very top. And then this is a, a bow viewing area that's open, of course. And then the dining room is on the lower deck. Uh, there's four inside cabins. They have windows, but they don't have a, uh, uh, a walkway. Uh, and then the cocktail lounge is up in, in front. So it's, uh, uh, like I said, there's about 20, 22, 24 cabins on it. Uh, you have the owner suite, the deluxe, uh, the uh, AAA, uh, AA, and uh, a cabin. These are the A cabins. They have a queen size bed and a single bed uh, in them. So, uh, and, and I'll, we'll go through that a little later. But uh, uh, this is your, uh, like I say, they all have outside uh, outside entrances and windows. Uh, this is your do not disturb <laughs> sign right here. It's a, a rope that you put out outside your door, uh, and that will notify that. Uh, the uh, cabin attendants not to come in. But uh, they're all self-contained. They have showers, toilets, uh, sink, running water, et cetera, closet space, and then under the bed storage for luggage. But as you can see, every place that we go on this, uh, with this uh, small boat, uh, we're very close to the shore all the time. So the scenery is just incredible. Uh, now you have a choice of either two, two beds, or they put them together and make a king size bed. Uh, there's actually a little more room uh, with the two single beds uh, than a king size bed. I found that out the hard way. Um, but uh, they, you have your choice. You can uh, ask for either what they do is put them together and then put the bedside table uh, over on the other side. So uh, dining, of course, three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, breakfast and lunch is a little more less formal. Uh, for dinner, they put the linen napkins and tablecloths on. For breakfast and lunch, it's uh, just uh, uh, regular service, if you will. Um, the front of the uh, uh, cocktail lounge on the Admiral's Dream is a uh, nice viewing. Uh, and then, of course, they have cocktail hour every night with their d'oeuvres uh, uh, available for you. So basically, what we're going to do on this is uh, uh, we start out in the capital city of Juneau. Uh, then the next day we go over to, uh, uh, well, actually the morning of the next day, we uh, tour Juneau, Mendenhall Glacier, and uh, uh, the Glacier Gardens. Then we go over to Orca Point Lodge. And this is a highlight, believe me. Uh, it's an all-you-can-eat king crab and salmon dinner with the most incredible desserts you will ever see. And then from Orca Point Lodge, uh, we're going to come down uh, the next day and go into Tracy Arm Fjord, which is down here. This is probably one of the most exciting days you'll have because we're going into the South Sawyer Glacier. Uh, we'll uh, actually get into the skiffs uh, and uh, go right up to the glacier. And I'll show you a video of that uh, uh, shortly. Uh, the next day, then we're going to go down to Wrangell, 
which is down down through this passage. And we go, by the way, we're coming through Frederick Sound. Frederick Sound is every year I've been there, this is where I've seen the most whales in Alaska, is, is right in through here, Frederick Sound. Uh, so we'll come down to Wrangell. Uh, we'll have time to go into the town. And then we're going to take jet boats up the Stikine River uh, to this glacier right here. Uh, and it's just a, a wonderful. If you've never been on a jet boat in the rivers, it's really fun. So we'll have probably four or five uh, jet boats. And then we'll come back out and we're going to go up to Petersburg. Another, and both of these are true Alaskan uh, villages, if you will. There's not cruise ships in there. Uh, so, of course, there won't be any cruise ships this year, but even next year, when when their cruises are back to normal, uh, there won't be any cruise ships in any of these ports. They're, they're just uh, not, uh, they don't have the docking facilities for them. So we'll go uh, in from Petersburg. We're going to go back up Frederick, up, uh, Frederick Sound again. This is Wales and through here. We'll go up Chatham Strait uh, into Glacier Bay. And... Uh, uh, well, excuse me, we're going to go to uh, uh, in here to uh, Icy Strait Point, uh, spend the day in Icy Strait Point, and then from there, we'll go up into Glacier Bay, spend the day up in Glacier Bay, and then we'll come down on the eastern side. This is Baranoff Island here, this, this island. Uh, we'll come down on the eastern side of Baranoff Island and uh, visit uh, possibly a, a, a salmon hatchery, uh, and we'll do some kayaking and skiffing uh, in here. And then we'll come down into Peril Strait, which is beautiful. Uh, a lot of whales in through this area again. And then we'll come down and, and go down into the port of Sitka. Uh, you'll have a half a day in Sitka and then uh, the opportunity to stay an extra day or two and go fishing out of Sitka or fly home. Uh, and we'll, we'll uh, arrange all of that for you. So that's basically what we're going to be doing is we're covering all basically all of this area of the inside passage. All the areas that we're in are protected waters. Uh, you won't you won't have any of the uh, uh, the waves from from out out through here. So we're all in protected waters all the way down and all the way up. So you won't uh, seasickness will not be an issue. Uh, all of our uh, Alaska Dream Cruise sailings include. We have a, a we have a cruise manager on board with you. Uh, we have expedition leaders. Of course, all your meals are uh, are included. They have educational presentations. Uh, we have social hour with beer and wine. Uh, they actually have uh, rain gear, really nice rain gear, pants and jackets uh, that will uh, uh, get your your sizes, and those will be in your cabins along with boots. Uh, and then, of course, all your gratuities are taken care of. Every day, your shore excursions are included. So you don't ever have to buy anything on, on this. Everything we do is inclusive. That's the big difference between uh, this particular boat and the, and the cruise ships. Everything is included on this one. So uh, uh, again, this is the picture of the Admiral to Dream. And this is in Sawyer Glacier, again, that we'll be visiting. And these are the skiffs that uh, we'll be on. They hold about 16 or 18 people. Uh, as you can see, when we uh, every day that we're cruising, we're right parallel to the shore. So uh, wildlife viewing is exceptional. Um, uh, 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 why, why those came out of place, but <clears throat> so we'll start the trip out in Juneau. Uh, so if you're doing, let's say, if you pair this with uh, uh, a land tour. Uh, you'd fly from uh, Anchorage to Juneau, uh, start the trip there. If you just want to do the cruise alone, uh, you, you'd fly into Juneau. So you'd, let's say if you're going to fly from uh, uh, Kansas City. So you go Kansas City to Seattle, uh, Seattle to uh, uh, Juneau, and then June, uh, Sitka back to uh, uh, Seattle and back to uh, Kansas City. Uh, so uh, we'll spend, uh, you'll arrive in, in Juneau the first day. The, the next day, the next morning, we're going to take you out to Mendenhall Glacier. Uh, spend some time at this beautiful glacier. Uh, 
it's uh, it's walkable. You can actually walk up to the glacier and walk on the glacier if you'd like. There's a great visitor center as well here. <clears throat> and then we'll take you out to Glacier Gardens. And this is really an incredible experience. So that afternoon, we're going to sail over to Icy Spray Point, excuse me, to uh, Orca Point Lodge. And this is uh, probably one of the, the, the better meals that you'll have in the state of Alaska. Uh, <clears throat> the dining rooms are all in here and uh, the preparation is incredible. So it's an all you can eat uh, king crab, uh, fresh king salmon, uh, desserts. I think believe there's, uh, there's prime rib if you're not uh, available uh, to eat fish. Uh, or seafood, but uh, you can have as much as you want uh, without question. Um, this is the chef that's uh, preparing a fresh king salmon. And of course you can eat outside or inside. This is a group that we had uh, eat, eating outside. The, the ship is docked right there. The, your ship is docked right there. Uh, just a fabulous uh, a dinner. Uh, yeah, she's eating, uh, I thought there was somebody who was eating prime rib, I guess there is. Uh, that's salmon, and I guess she does have a piece of prime rib there too. So whatever you want, you have. Uh, just go back as, and eat as much as you want. Believe me, uh, there's no uh, there's no sparsity of food on, on available on the, on this boat at, at all. Uh, so then we're going to take you down to Tracy Arm Fjord, and this could be another highlight of of your trip. So uh, the uh, Dream Cruise will uh, park right outside. You'll board these uh, skiffs and then go right up to the glacier. Uh, these are all harbor seals that you see here. You're going to get some incredible pictures of, uh, of marine life uh, on this cruise. Um, it's just one of the most beautiful uh, experiences you can have on uh, this is going into uh, Sawyer Glacier. Uh, again, the, the skiff goes right up to the glacier. And uh, these are the skiffs with about 18 people on them. Uh, they have, of course, a naturalist on board that uh, uh, drives the boat as, as well. So you're gonna get right up close, and get some beautiful pictures of these, this blue ice. Um, and these are the harbor seals with the pups. As, as you can see, there's uh, quite a few of them in uh, uh, Sawyer Glacier. Um, again, the, uh, the boat holds about uh, 18 to 20 people. And it's uh, guided by a professional uh, statesman, if you will. Uh, it's really fun to go into that glacier. I'm going to show you a picture of what the experience, well, it did last year, but the year before last. Uh, Matt, our, our uh, cruise manager, actually shot this with his cell phone. And uh, excuse the language of some of the, uh, some of the passengers on here because they were uh, Part of the reason to go to the glacier is to experience glacier calving. And that's when the big chunks of ice come falling down. And Twin Sawyer Glaciers have- Yay, 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 yay! Woo-hoo! Right, 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 oh, left, left! Oh, right there. Right there. Oh, there. Oh, there. Oh, there. Woo! They got Another show. some pretty incredible calving on this uh, particular day. Everything was just right. <laughs> He's probably pretty blind. This is this is the our little the, the skip out there right with there. our third group the, is getting a show. Skiff. We call them bibs, but that's a skiff right there. That's how close they get to the glacier. <laughs> Now you may hear some excitement coming in just a short. Whoa! Whoa! Oh my God! Wow! Now keep your eye on this skiff. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Look at that wave! Oh my God! They're riding the waves. Do they have it in high gear? Oh my gosh. He's going behind He's going behind Oh my gosh, look at that wave. How high that thing is. Oh 
Oh, wow. Oh, Jesus. Hang on, guys. Oh, my God. Well, they survived. They had a great time and they had some great photographs of, uh, to bring back and memories back. But uh, as, again, as again, you can see what on the skiff, we get so close to the waterfalls and scenery. It's just really remarkable. Uh, as I said, John and I did this, uh, I don't remember if it was seven, eight years ago was our first trip on these. But it was, what we saw was just absolutely incredible i we were just we talked about it for weeks and weeks uh, this is the jet boat as we go down into uh the stikine river in wrangell and as you can see again we get real close to the uh, to the glaciers uh, as we come down uh, then we'll go up to petersburg and petersburg is actually a norwegian village i know that uh, people aren't expecting that in southeast alaska <clears throat> but it's a, Nor a Norwegian fishing village. And we'll see the Norwegian dancers in the Centennial Hall also have a chance to uh, spend some time in the town. Uh, it's really a beautiful little town. Uh, a couple of salmon processing plants there as well. Uh, <clears throat> you'll also see throughout Southeast Alaska, it's the native Clinkets that are uh, in the uh, Shishimian uh, tribe that are down there and Haida. Uh, Clink and Haida, Shishimian, uh, predominantly in southeast Alaska, where we'll be. Again, uh, we'll get very close to the uh, to the wildlife or marine life. These are, are uh, sea lions. Uh, and there's a harbor seal, a good close-up picture of a harbor seal. And of course, the whales. Uh, this is a bubble feed. And if you've uh, attended uh, my show yesterday when I talked about the catamaran and we talked about these bubble feeds. Uh, <clears throat> in Frederick Sound, in that area, when John and I did this seven years ago, prior to this particular trip, I did a whale watch trip out of Juneau um, probably 10, 15 years ago. And I was fortunate enough to see one bubble feed. The year that John and I went down in Frederick Sound, we saw 12 of these in one day. It was just the, the most incredible, uh, the incredible day uh, that I've ever spent in Alaska. And what those are is uh, uh, a, a pot of whales, which is usually seven or eight whales, uh, they, they swim together. And when they come across a school of bait fish, they dive below them and they'll make a circle and that'll release their air. That's what they call a bubble feed. And that confuses the bait fish and they all get into a tight ball. And then on command, they all shoot out of the water with their mouth open. And that's what, what you see happening here. And the captain can usually see that uh, on, on his radar when a, a group of them are together. And when you see the bubbles start coming up, He'll, he'll, he'll actually stop uh, and we'll watch this. And these are pictures I think I probably actually took uh, right off the side of the boat. Uh, we were that close to them. Uh, we had a whale's tail, I think, that came within 50 feet of our, our the rear of the boat in, in the evening. I mean, it's just, it's one of the best whale watching trips I'd ever, ever been on. Uh, also, we saw a lot of bears on there that, uh, because we're so the proximity of, of the shoreline that we're on, we get a chance to see those uh, as well. And this is one of the glaciers that they do a glacier walk on uh, when they take the, the skiffs and kayaks uh, over to it. Uh, and those will be in, in variable uh, spots that we do that. We probably have uh, three or four different spots where we. Uh, we take the, the skiffs and the kayaks out to uh, spend the afternoon. Uh, again, the scenery and the, the marine life is just incredible as we go across. Um, we get into the areas that the cruise ship can't get in. Uh, even when we go into uh, uh, 
um, <clears throat> uh, the uh, Sawyer Glacier. The cruise ships go into Sawyer Glacier, but they can't get as far back as, as we do. Uh, so they have to stop because of the, the uh, amount of uh, um, a draw that they, they have on the cruise ships compared to the, the skiffs. Uh, so we're gonna, you're gonna see some really neat things. So the next day we'll go over to Icy Strait Point and we're gonna spend uh, the day in Icy Strait Point. A uh, lot of activities to do in Icy Strait Point. This is uh, the old Huna Packing Company. Uh, this whole uh, community is uh, uh, run by the Huna Clinket natives. And so we're gonna be able to experience uh, uh, the native Clinket uh, uh, culture in, uh, in Huna. Uh, and Icy Strait Point. Uh, they're very colorful. They have the red and black uh, outfits, uh, the totem poles, and they also have the zip line, which is the largest uh, zip line in North America. It's uh, roughly 5,800 feet that you're uh, declining uh, in 70 seconds. So they, it used to take us 45 minutes to, to go up to the top by, by bus. Uh, we'd start out down here in the village and went work our way up the mountain. Now they're building a tram that'll take you up in probably 10 minutes uh, so they can uh, get you up a lot quicker. Uh, that should be completed uh, this year. Uh, <clears throat> and then you strap yourself, they strap you into these seats and you come down at roughly about 60 miles an hour. It's really a, a fun trip. So the next day, then after a day in uh, in uh, uh, in uh, Icy Strait Point, and there, there's a lot of things to do there. There's there's kayaking, there's whale watching, uh, there's a, uh, a Huna Clinket uh, show to uh, familiarize you a little bit about the Clinket culture, and so there's a lot of things to do when when we're in town. The next day we're going to go up to uh, Icy, uh, excuse me, into Glacier Bay. And as we enter, again, this is whale, a lot of whales in here, humpbacks and orca whale. We'll come up, we'll go into Muir's, uh, Muir's Inlet. This is Muir's Glacier up, up through here. We'll visit that one, uh, come down into the uh, west, western uh, inlet, and then up to Margarine Glacier, Grand Pacific Glacier, and then into John Hopkins Glacier. Now, cruise ships aren't allowed to go in here, I think from May 31st until August uh, 25th, uh, because of the seal pups uh, are being born in there. We can get in there with a the small boat, uh, but not, uh, and the catamarans, but not the cruise ships are not allowed in. Then we'll come back down, uh, visit a couple of these islands, and uh, back down. Bartlett Cove is over here. Uh, we'll uh, make a stop there. The National Park uh, uh, Services there, you can get your uh, uh, park passport stamp, and then we're back into uh, uh, back into the uh, uh, eastern side of Baranoff Island, and we'll spend the day in uh, Baranoff Island. Well, excuse me, uh, this is that John Hopkins Glacier uh, that the cruise ships can't go into. Uh, this is where the seal pups are being born. But uh, again, we're going to see some incredible uh, uh, cabin uh, of the glaciers in here. Uh, we'll come out of Glacier Bay again. You'll see a lot of, of whales in the entranceway, both humpbacks and orca whales. And of course, you'll see the, uh, the harbor seals as, as well as these little creatures. And these are what, uh, uh, the, when Russia owned Alaska, this was their main cash crop. Uh, the sea otter pelts were so valuable because they're they're so warm. Uh, a one one inch of uh, of a sea otter pelt contains over one million hairs per square inch. So that's why they're they're so warm because of the the buoyancy uh, and all the, the the fur that's actually on them. But they're really cool animals to see. They're laying on their back, usually eating something. They'll they'll dive down and get a clam or something and uh, uh, oyster and then come up and uh, float around the top and, and eat it. Uh, if you see a bunch of those together, it's called a raft of sea otters. Uh, so it's a, we talked about a, 
a pod of whales. Now you've uh, got a pot or a, a raft of sea otters. Uh, we'll then come down um, after a, a day in, um, on the eastern side of Baranoff Island. We'll come down into uh, uh, the Peril Straits and uh, work our way into Sitka. The Peril Straits is just a beautiful area with the, the whales and the scenery. Uh, it's very narrow and very, very scenic. Uh, we'll come into Sitka. Uh, you'll spend uh, the afternoon in, or that evening in Sitka. Uh, you'll have some time to uh, explore Sitka. That's overlooked by Mount Edgecombe, which is a semi-active volcano. Uh, we'll go out to the Rapture Center, uh, visit that, uh, and the Fortress of Bears. And there's also uh, there's also the uh, New Archangel Dancers, the Russian Dancers, and there's the uh, uh, Sitka. Uh, can't think of the name of it now, but it's the it's a Clinket uh, a clan house where you can visit and they do a show there as well. Uh, very interesting. And, and of course, the there's a, the old Sitka uh, cemetery is available. Uh, there's also the uh, 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 Russian uh, uh, log house. It's really some neat things to see in, in Sitka. It's probably it is my favorite city in, in the state of Alaska. Very nice. And of course, the, the main draw is the uh, uh, St. Michael's Cathedral. Uh, that's the uh, largest Russian Orthodox church in, in the state of Alaska, also the home of the bishop. Uh, we will do, he'll give you a tour of that with all the artifacts, etc. So if you want, I, I would really recommend uh, spending an extra day or two in Sitka to see everything because you've only got basically a half a day there. Uh, I would extend your stay uh, and we can arrange all that for you to stay in the same hotel. And that is probably the best fishing that I've ever done in Alaska. Uh, several years ago, probably seven or eight years ago, I took uh, my three children up and we went fishing for the day. And the limit on silver salmon is seven per, excuse me, six per day. Uh, king salmon is I think one or two per day and then halibut is one or two per day. In one hour, we had our limit, the four of us, of silver salmon. Um, and then we proceeded to fish kings and halibut. Uh, we brought back five uh, cases of, of uh, fillets, and they're usually, roughly about 50 pounds each, 40, 50 pounds each. So we had, uh, we had enough fish to last us all for a long time. But I really recommend uh, spending an extra day uh, letting us do all the arrangements for you. And uh, we've got two departures uh, next year on the Alaska Dream Cruise. We have one, only have one this year, and that sold out uh, in 2021 uh, because we had people transfer over from last year that didn't go. But next year, we've got two. Uh, we are taking reservations or waiting list on them. Uh, we'll have those dates published uh, probably within two weeks. Uh, they'll be out usually by April 1st, they're out. So um, really consider it because it's one of the greatest uh, uh, water experiences you can have. Uh, the, uh, the catamaran uh, that we're running is also a great experience. The difference between catamaran and the dream cruise is that the dream cruise, you spend six, seven nights on the boat. On the catamaran, you spend uh, six, uh, six or seven nights in the hotels, four nights in, in uh, Juneau, two nights in Sitka. Uh, we don't quite go into Wrangell and Petersburg on the, uh, on the catamaran, uh, but pretty much other, it's the same, uh, the, the same track. Mm -hmm.